In your experience, uh, we've kind of tried to review a little bit uh, how uh, extensive was the use of this type of device to assist communication of, on non-verbal autistic children or individuals. Uh, how, how much is it likely to benefit the population given one, the cost, second, there is still an aspect of learning and you're talking about the prerequisite of having some PEX skills. Um, what is your estimate of uh, how useful this is going to be? Well, I've visited various different schools and different exhibitions and I'm, I'm surprised myself by seeing children who have not really had very much exposure to, to the PEC system or, or to some various different communication aids but that are, are given um, a speak to me device with some one-to-one -one support and quickly understand the drag and drop concept of moving an object or a virtual object from one element of the screen to another element of the screen and then pressing the talk button or speak button to, to be able to uh, expressively communicate and you know my experience has been so far and obviously I'm not a professional I'm only a parent myself but but seeing children working with it um, you know some, some of the children take to it instantaneously with with very limited input from a therapist or a teacher um, and look at exploring the, uh, the configuration of Speaks Me. Others require a little bit more support about the physical element of doing the drag and drop. And again, one of the things that we've been working on with Speaks For Me is working on a variety of different input technologies, not just on the touch screen, but also on uh, you know, external joysticks or trackable mice, um, and certainly on some of the eye gaze technology that we've been working with as well, uh, to try and make sure that we can then open the access method up for the children or the individual that's using Speaks For Me. Um, very good. Um, now, Obviously, this is a small computer, so it's a little bit more sophisticated than, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the device. I mean, you can have access to internet, you can have access to videos, you can yeah. have access to games. Um, we talked in the past about the possibility to break, uh, to try to really pair uh, the device with very fun activity for the child, like his favorite video, favorite game in order to um, to make this object even more compelling to, to use, just to bypass these difficulties of motivation. Yes. Um, how can you see the use of that? How, what would you be recommending to do for parents? I think one of the things that we're looking at trying to do is not only the, the level of reinforcement that's provided by receiving the object or the item or the, the communication attempt that's already been done there, but also to try and build in some level of uh, reinforcement so that, uh, you know, as you say, that the, the child can perhaps have access to video clips or uh, music clips or stories or uh, some form of uh, electronic game um, or, uh, you know, visual simulation or uh, audio video uh, stimulation for a period of time to, to help, you know, uh, you know, to motivate them to be more expressive, to be more... Uh, engaging with people and that's certainly a, an area that we're looking at trying to uh, to extend into uh, because of the power of the device and the flexibility of the device um, and to try and explore opportunities of how that can be done uh, in a hopefully in a seamless way without necessarily impacting the ability to use speaks for me effectively um, and again it's something that we've got to carefully consider but work with speech and language professionals and other professionals uh, and ABA therapists, for example, to, uh, to, to see how best we can achieve that. Very good. Um, okay, in terms of using this uh, more specifically as a teaching device, so we were talking about, for example, a, a particular lesson. Say there is a story and we want to assess the understanding of the child in relation to that story, we could make it more or less easy for example, we say, where did Tom leave his book? Yeah. Is that in a kitchen or is it in his bedroom? And you will have, um, say, a selection of four possible um, places just to help the child to get the right answer. Would you consider embedding in this um, supported um, teaching device also a device that will enable to record the success rate of the child, the performance of the child with regard to the teaching uh, device? Yeah, I mean, again, that's a, a good question with respect of, because the, the devices themselves are um, 
uh, PCs, computers, then you know one of the things that we'd like to try and do is is, is, is to capture the effectiveness of speaks for me, how many requests have been made, how, how, how successful those requests have been made, whether they were appropriate requests, and, and to capture that data um, of, over a, a period of time that can then either be uh, used by the therapist or the parent or the teachers uh, to, uh, to verify how effective speaks for me has been, uh, and to use that as a yardstick of how to make improvements in the future. Uh, again, it's not a service that we've currently embedded so far, but it's certainly something that we'd like to put into uh, one of the future versions, hopefully in the near future as well.